Hi everybody, this is Miguel. I'm just coming in here real quick to let you know that um, there is some audio uh, issues with today's episode. Uh, it's been a while since I've recorded and I ha- am a bit rusty and I forgot to make sure that my external mic was picking up and so it was not and it's just a laptop mic. It's not too bad but it's something I just want to let you know about and um, I will make sure to correct it going forward. All right, let's get into the show. Welcome to My Horror Professional. My name is Miguel Myers, and I know it's been a while since you heard my voice, and I am very excited uh, to be here with my uh, guest, Anthony Jerome M. Anthony, say hi to the folks. Hello. Did you just tell me what to do? No. Hello, everyone. (laughs) Hello, everyone. Miguel, I want to thank you so much for having me back, but also, too, for being back. Because, you know, your podcast is one of my favorites. I've been yearning for it. I'm glad you decided to give the people a taste of what they need and want. So thank you for returning. <laughs> thank you very much. And I'll be sending you that $20 via Venmo, just like we discussed. Thank you. A so. <laughs> boy needs to eat. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's been a long time. Um, uh, it's been about six months, more or less. I think the mid- mid-December uh, is when I, I last posted. Uh, and it, a lot of stuff has happened. Um, and, you know, I was going through a lot of stuff. And I'm starting to feel like coming out of it. And I'm starting to feel like uh, why well, I, I do feel like I want to record more. I was missing you yeah. know, this. I was missing you know talking to Anthony and all the other people that... Um, you know, the, the artists that come on the show, my friends that come on the show, like I, I, I for a long time, I was using therapy, uh, using talking about horror movies as therapy. And then I got into <laughs> therapy and I saw, mm. oh, wait, no, that's therapy. And then that, <laughs> that, that fucked me up. You know, not to say that you can't use movies and media as therapy, because I understand a lot of people do. I did as well. I'm not belittling that at all. My experience was different going into therapy. So, um, so I lost a lot of that want to talk about movies and stuff. And, uh, but, you know, with the help of, you know, therapist, my wife, my friends, Anthony, like I'm feeling a lot better, feeling like I want to record. So that's why we're doing this here. Um, but I wanted to give a bit of a update since the last time we talked. And, and then yes, we, can, please. we can lead into why we're doing this, this movie. And so... Uh, like everybody knows, um, well, I should hope you know, or if you don't know, typically what we used to do on My Horror Professional is I'd have a guest come on and talk about a classic horror movie that they haven't seen and why, and then we would go scene by scene and kind of discuss it and get really in-depth into conversation about it, but uh, that was a lot of work for one person. Um, I would be spending upwards of you know, 16, 18, 20 hours a week on, on one episode. On top of the episodes Anthony and Jerome M and I were doing for my <laughs> 2000 confessional and all the other uh, stuff that I was putting uh, on the Patreon, so it was just a lot of work and I I, I burned myself out. So uh, the only way that I can see moving forward with the pro- with the podcast was changing the format a bit. And we're still going to be doing classic horror movies that people haven't seen starting next week because Anthony has seen this <laughs> Anthony has seen this movie, but we're we're going to cheat a little bit just because. There's nobody else I wanted to talk about this movie more with than than Anthony, so um, thank you. You're just gonna have to forgive us for for a second for for this <laughs> one. But uh, instead of going scene by scene and you know having three and a half, sometimes four hour long episodes, which I loved, uh, we're just gonna be talking about the movie and what we thought about it. You know, getting in depth when I can, but sh- they have to be shorter episodes in order for me to be able to continue to the. Uh, to, in order to continue to do the podcast moving forward. So uh, that's the new format of the show. I hope that you enjoy it. Um, we're still working out a lot of the kinks. Um, like, <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, like, I'm not sure how this episode is going to go. Uh, you're going to be as surprised as I am. But I think, I mean, with, with, with AJM on the line, he, it's going to be fucking entertaining. So, <clears throat> so with that, um, yeah, so I've just been doing life, you know, like trying to get up out of depression. Uh, and actually, my wife and I are going through the process of trying to adopt a child. Yes. And uh, we're in the final stages of that, of that. And um, so that's papers are being signed. <laughs> papers have been signed and all that. And so um, that's why I was looking, lo- looking forward to the future. I would not be able to do this show if mm. I had a child and then all, uh, it just wouldn't happen. So <laughs> I'm trying to make this work, uh, make the show work around what the, the, the life changes that, that, that I'm having. So, so that's what's going on. And then um, very recently, my wife and I went to Satan Con, which yes. was in Boston. And Anthony and I talked, we, we chatted about this, I don't know, maybe a week or two ago, um, because we hadn't talked in a long time, like face to face, which sucks. You know, <laughs> you know, it sucks being friends with like the internet is awesome, right? But and I never would be friends with Anthony without the internet and all that sort of stuff. Right. It sucks not it sucks not being able to go for a drink with you, you know, just going out to the freaking bar or, right. or getting some getting some tacos, you know. So Ooh, it like chicken wings. It, chicken wings, right? <laughs> so yeah, I actually have to make an effort to like zoom with people or Skype with people, you know. So uh, Anthony and I did that a couple weeks ago. We talked about my my trip. It was actually my wife and I's anniversary present to each other. We went to Boston for Satan Con, and I gotta tell you, Anthony, like I know you, I told you already, but it was so much fun. Uh, just the, te- the, the I you would have fucking loved it. The debauchery that was there, <laughs> no. like it would have fit the your black aesthetic. the black goats. Yes, like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I sent Anthony pictures of it, and um, just a lot of fun. It was it fun being around people that are like you, that are like minded as well, like because. It's not like everybody was like me. I mean, I was, there, there were some Hispanic people. There were some Mexican people. There were some in Puerto Rican, that's all. But typically, as when I say like me, I don't mean who looked like me. I meant like-minded, mm-hmm. meaning, you know, I am an atheist. Anthony, I don't know where you lie on that. And you don't need to say if you do or don't. But <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm an atheist, and I like being around other like people like-minded people like that and i don't have to worry about all the baggage with the religion that i have for my life and all that so it was just great it was just a positive energy it was just so much fun and then i was telling anthony about it and we were like well i th- i was i was like i don't remember exactly how it happened but i was like i think it's time to come back i'm feeling good <laughs> Especially after uh, I was at um, the Ghoulish Book Festival in San Antonio. Yes. Which my, uh, yeah, which my friend Max Booth and his wife Lori put on for uh, for the second year in a row. And just being around all those people, like so many like people of color who are into horror. Yeah, man. And you're going to be, I, I, I've asked a lot of them to come on to the show, some repeated guests. Yeah, Johnny Compton is going to be back on. Eve Harms is going to be back on. And some new people. Miracle Austin, she's amazing. Her, her writing is great. Uh, and, and, and just a bunch of other people that, uh, you know, I, I connected with. And they're going to be coming back on. But that got me more excited about, about you know, doing the podcast again. So I spoke to, uh, with Anthony. And, and he's always been supportive. He's, you know, been great about that. And he's like, yeah, let's, let's do, I think it was your uh, idea to do uh, the movie we're doing today, which is, the devil's advocate is that correct yes because you had just come from satan con you were expressing how you're in the mood to record and like you sent me the list of movies and i'm like let's talk about the devil like that you know because listen i don't the media has done a very good job at making this a guy seem like a cool guy <laughs> so let's let's watch a movie where he's involved and like you know let let's 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 try to gather some of those Satan con vibes for ourselves at home, you know? Well, I got to tell you, the, the media in this particular instance still did a great job of making the devil look like a great guy. Uh, I'm he, was making, he was making some points. He was, he was, uh, he, at the end, especially, that soliloquy or monologue. No, the monologue. That, yeah. Okay, Fucking I have amazing. pieces, I have lines written because I'm like, um, you know, I feel as if I'm being called out. And I don't appreciate it. Like, <laughs> yeah, so that's been a little bit behind the scenes and, and the kind of what I've been doing and, and why we decided to do The Devil's Advocate um, today. 
<laughs> so I just realized that we had, I wasn't, I did not hit record on our, our platform of choice. So all this stuff that I just said was, you're only hearing it because I have Audacity <laughs> and both myself and AJM were using it as backup. So thank God. Cause I, if I had to start that over again, I would not have done it. And I just would have been like, today we're doing devil's advocate. Blah, 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 blah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Damn. Yeah, but okay. So you asked me if I if I had met if I met Satan. Yeah, were they in attendance? They, you know, Not this year they could have been. You know, as mm. far as like, um, as far as Al Pacino's character is concerned, like he apparently can be anybody, right? So he might have been. But um, so yeah, so today we are talking about the Devil's Advocate which is a movie from 1997, which was adapted by a novel, I'm sorry, from a novel by Andrew Niederman from 1990. And mm. the movie starts stars Keanu Reeves, Charlize Theron, and Al Pacino, I, I think are the biggest one. And of course, Coach, Craig, Craig, I don't know if you remember, that was a dated reference. Craig T. Nelson. Do you know, Craig T. Nelson is the dad from... Um, uh, that horror movie, oh my god, super uh, paranormal poltergeist. He's the dad um, from poltergeist. He's the one in this movie who is having an affair, right? And his wife is, is there, murdered. As a yeah, the, the big trial, he's accused of murdering. Oh, okay, okay. So he was on a TV show in the 90s called Coach, which uh, <laughs> he, he, he played a football coach. And it was big. It was like Roseanne Barb. Yeah, like yeah, Roseanne. yeah, Miguel. We, we, we know. No, we don't. <laughs> Right. A, a, a football sitcom? Ooh, we. <laughs> it was on ABC. Uh, if you remember this, please mm-hmm. help me shame Anthony Drummond because he doesn't know this. Um, you can reach out to him on Twitter. Uh, Anthony, could you please, <laughs> if you don't mind, could you please tell everybody how they can reach out to you? Yeah, that's Anthony Jerome M. And I'm telling you right now, I'd rather watch Wings and Cheers before ever thinking about watching Coach. Wings so. was a good show. We, Cheers, uh, you know, whatever. The, the lady, I, uh, I never watched it. Did you know? Hey, do you know that I, I literally, I literally tell everyone this any chance I get. The cast of Cheers, they were between the ages of twenty-seven and thirty. Yikes. Look at them. Look yeah. at them. Norm, yeah. he was twenty-seven. No, you're lying. He you're was lying. twenty-seven. Listen, when I because when I read it, I was feeling down about myself and my looks. I'm like, I just was feeling down. And then I saw this little article about, oh, guess how old the cast of Cheers is? Saw Norm was twenty-seven. Instantly felt better about everything I felt bad about. <laughs> That's what happens when you grow up in a society where everybody chain smokes. Wait a minute. That's when it was good for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like. Yeah, that's that's frightening. That is frightening. <laughs> Sorry to distract us, but I, I no, 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 no. You just you just played me because you told me that you watched Wings and you didn't watch Wings, and I opened up to you. No, no, no little... I watch Wings, not Cheers. Okay, okay, okay. Because right. <laughs> my little '90s heart opened up to you, and and I thought you stomped on it, but you did not. Oh no, no, that shit came on at Nick at Night, and I was like, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, but yeah, but I think uh, the major players here in the movie, obviously Keanu Reeves uh, playing Kevin Lomax, Al Pacino playing John Milton, and Charlize Theron playing Marianne Lomax, uh, Keanu's wife. So, real quick, I just wanted to because I didn't realize this, like I I, I, I knew when somebody said Devil's Advocate what they like what that meant because mm-hmm. I had a couple of people close to me who love to play devil's advocate and it's very, mm-hmm. very frustrating to me mm-hmm. uh, and spe- and not them specifically, but also I know like in the fight for civil rights and LGBTQ rights and all that sort of stuff, not all white people, but a lot of white people love to play devil's advocate. Oh, mm-hmm. why, why was he resisting? Oh, why, mm-hmm. you know what he, Oh, did he have a criminal background? That, that sort of thing. Right. So it pisses me off. But I understood mm-hmm devil's advocate in that context but i didn't know specifically where it came from and and so i looked this up real quick and so the the devil's advocate was an official in the catholic church who would attempt to prove a candidate for canonization to not be a saint 
or by extension, a figure of speech or for someone who takes a position they do not necessarily agree with or runs counter to their or others' interests for the sake of debate or to explore the thought further, possibly with regards to demonstrated impartiality. So that that's funny is, so that second half of that sentence is what I understood it to be. But that mm-hmm. first half, being an official in the Catholic Church who would attempt to prove a candidate who, who was up for being a saint was not actually a saint. I actually like that. That's kind of cool. Like, I'm sure, I'm not sure how down for the cause they were, like how hard they tried or whatever. But I like the fact that like Mother, mother somebody like Mother Teresa was up for sainthood and somebody was like, that bitch ain't all that. Like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. See, okay, here's my thought. My thought is one day the devil decided I'm going to go fuck with the church. And he's and like, he, he made up this role as like, Hey, you guys need to look at it from both angles. And then the church was like, you're right. And then the devil got into religion. Like I, that just sounds like such a, like, let's say a wolf had like, was, was the sheep herder. It's like, Oh, I don't know why the sheep keep missing. I, I don't know yeah. what's going on. Like, I, <laughs> well, the, the funny thing about that, that line of thought is if the devil can do that, he can also make up the church. He could also oh, right. That, right. Lead, you, lead you to believe <laughs> that the church was real when it's not. He could also lead you to believe that God is real, which is not. So I, I'm not gonna, I won't get into it, but I'm just saying, like, I love that, <laughs> I love that train of thought because, you know, it, it just, it, it's fun to go down. But that, that was, uh, that's what the, a devil's advocate actually is. Um, and now, so as far as the movie itself, The Devil's Advocate from 1997, I'm just going to go a real quick rundown of it. We're, like I said, we're not doing, we're not going to be doing the whole scene by scene. I just want to give you guys a small uh, summary, <laughs> a small summary. <laughs> of the so um, The Devil's Advocate uh, was based on Andrew Neiman's novel from 1990 of the same name. It's about a gifted young Florida lawyer, played by Keanu Reeves, invited to New York City to work for a major firm as his wife, becomes haunted by frightening visions the lawyer slowly begins to realize the owner of the firm is not what he appears to be and is in fact the devil um so pacino's character satan he's listed in the credits takes the guise of a human lawyer named after the author of paradise lost john milton so that was something also that i thought was really interesting is the the name john milton that pacino's character is is named um, be, because I've be, because I've gotten more involved in uh, the Satanic Temple uh, as of rec- uh, as of the recent past, like I, I've started following other social media and also like researching a bit further, and I, I came across the name, I came across a society called the John Milton Society, and and I was like, what's the John Milton Society? And then I realized that the John Milton Society uh, is. Uh, are, are people who are not advocating. They're just like, they, they like this author and, uh, and they, they're trying to, uh, sorry, I can't think. They're trying to like have his work studied uh, in, 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 uh, in scholarly society, stuff like that. So they, they really like it. So John Milton himself uh, wrote Paradise Lost, which is an epic poem in blank verse, that came out uh, in the 17th century. Uh, the first version was published in 1667, consists of 10 books with over 10,000 lines of verse. Um, mm-hmm. the, the poem itself concerns the biblical story of the fall of man, the temptation of Adam and evil by the fallen angel Satan and their expulsion from the Garden of Eden. Interesting. So I, I love the fact that they chose that name uh, for Satan in this movie, uh, it's, it's just so Honestly, interesting, you know. If 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 the devil is that old, like John Milton is, like they like I I just use this name. It's fine. Like it's like I don't need to come up with a new name yet. And it, like, what is it? Four hundred years ago? He's like, trust. It's fine. I'll use the same name, John Milton. Like, yeah, it's cool. Um, and I thought it was funny because I've actually been reading. Um, Dante's Inferno, which yes, uh, uh, which is very similar. This is a, um, it's about Dante's uh, journey into the, what is it like the Seven Rings of Hell or whatever, 
Yes, it's the also rings of hell. it's yeah, and it's also in um, it's also in verse form. It's also a poem as well. Yeah. So, I like that. I like that. Like the two things that I'm doing are like, kind of coming together. Um, did you have oh, you yeah. read Dante's Inferno or the, the, the great I comedy? I yeah I do love the Divine Comedy for sure. It's also why I love As Above So Below uh, so much, and like I knew what was going on immediately because of that. And also, there's that like animated version of Dante's Inferno which was based on the Xbox game. Fantastic. Uh, Hell looks so disgusting in those portrayals. Um, also, the, the comedy itself is just one of the very, there was a lot of things that I didn't understand because there was a lot of like religious references to popes that I, I that's all I was able to grasp. I'm like, okay, so you're talking about popes, but like there was apparently like more tea built in that like I'm not going to research, but I still love like, I just eventually had to watch a video of like, okay, what does each ring of hell stand for? And like, what are the punishments there? What's going on? And like those videos are like 20 hours long. But it's like I'd rather listen to this than like try to sift my sift my way through this book because it's like I I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, and what's funny is I know in the past I we've talked perhaps it was you and I we've talked about the Seven Rings of Hell due to a movie that we watched. I don't I, I'm not remembering exactly now which movie it was. Um, ah, okay, I, I remember a conversation. May, perhaps yes. it was Silent Hill or something like that. I I don't remember, but yes, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it? <laughs> Okay, cool. Because we were, t- yeah. yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, like, I'm just, like, getting in. When, sorry. So, the, the, the journey that I'm on right now, uh, having lost my faith, which I've lost it over a decade now, but being more interested in the politics of of religion and mm. the, the power grabbing and uh, the backstabbing and all that stuff. Like if you like the popes, if you just went into the, I'm, I'm not going to go on a tangent, I swear. But if you just go into the history <laughs> of the popes and what bastards they were, they're not the the blessed people that you think they are. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's just amazing. Like take a breath and go. Okay, so. So I the just, Pope has Prada. The, the Pope has Prada shoes while some people are starving. So yeah, that yeah. tells you all you need to know. So yeah, exactly. Um, so and yeah, covering up. You know. The yes, the sex parties. Yeah, exactly. That too. So, so um, anyway, so I have to move off of this, otherwise I will just take the, <laughs> the whole time. For it. But so this just all, all these interests that I have are kind of merged right now into mm-hmm. this movie that we watched and it was so much fun and i i really i had probably been for me it was basically a new movie i remember okay. a couple things and also spoilers we're going to be talking about the movie 100 spoilers so if you haven't seen it please Great. just go watch it um but i remembered the, the part about him and her being related but at the end um them being brother mm-hmm. and sister or half sister. yeah him and his sister christabella yeah i remembered that part uh and i remembered obviously that pacino was a devil but mm. other than that it was a brand new movie to me how about for you so yeah it'd been a while since i'd last seen it um but watching it again because it has been so long i feel as if they took it's i have complicated feelings but I feel as if they took a really long time to get to letting us know he was the devil. Like, yeah, there were hints, you know, like when we first see him, he goes down into the depths of the subway. But it's like you live in New York. A ton of people do that. I'm not going to think they're the devil just because they went into the subway. Um, so I, I think it, it it took a little bit. of. I think it took too long, but also like, yeah, tease me a little bit. Like, thank you. Like now, like. I get, I get this more of a fuck. He, he he puts his finger in the holy water and it starts smoking. Oh, it's like, man, it's damn, so good, so good. Um, but you know, this is like a really like it's like a rare movie where it feels like a slow burn, but mm-hmm. shit is still happening. Like I know you said you watched this movie a couple of times. And the first time you were a bit bored. Yeah, uh, but, but for me, I've only had the chance to watch it once and. Um, I was entertained throughout. Like I was kind of waiting, waiting for it to drop, but I didn't. I forgot that it happened at the end. I mean, for me, 
it's totally worth it for that dialogue, for that monologue, mm. for Patino's mo- monologue at the end, for John Milton's monologue at the end. It's so worth it. So I don't know, like for you, you, you watched it a bunch of times after that first time of, of thinking it was boring. Did, did it, did it change immediately or? Yeah. It's uh, so what happened was I was so focused on Keanu Reeves character and like his rise to power and him achieving his goals. I didn't really realize that there's like, two and a half horror movies in this one movie. Um, two so and a half hour long movie, there better be some story. In r- it. Right, yeah. So there's like three horror movies in this, well, two and a half in this one movie. And like the first one is kind of like they're holding our head to like make sure we don't stop watching Keanu Reeves. Like, hey, that's who you're supposed to focus on. Which like his whole thing is he's rising to power. He's gaining all of these accomplishments and accolades and just moving so fast up the ladder. And then he slowly realizes that the people he's helping are pieces of shit and that he's kind of losing his morality bit by bit. And like, he's kind of losing his sense of integrity every step along the way. And like, he's dealing with this internal conflict. And then also, you know, he has to deal with his bitch wife, like, Oh, and then he finds out the devil is his dad. And so, like, there's that thing that we're kind of, like, forced to watch and understand. But for me, the real horror movie is if we took everything from Mary Ann's perspective. You know, she thinks she's get her husband's achieving all of his dreams. They move to the big city. She thinks shit's fucking cool, which it is cool. But then we find out this is the first time. This is the first time since she's been 13 that she hasn't had a job. So she's very fucking bored. And he's always at work. So she's isolated. So the relationship she had, she feels that slipping out of her hands. And not to mention that, her, she's seeing fucking demons. She's having prophetic dreams, yeah. uh, you know, scary dreams at that. And she, does, she can't achieve one of her life's goals of having a kid. So, like, she gets so much, like, taken away from her and finds out things she... She finds out there's these things that she can never have. And then, when she, after she sees demons, they start fucking with her. And then she kills herself because it's all too much. So, like, to me, that's the real horror. And also, her husband dismisses her every step of the fucking way. Every step. And, like, the the fact is, you weren't here. You haven't been in this house 20 minutes, and you're telling me what I'm supposed to think? Like, I'm going to kill myself, too. Like, I, I, don't, li- I don't like you. Yeah. I hate being married to you. I don't have a husband, but I'm married. Makes no fucking sense. So, like, for me, the re- her... Her story is the real horror movie. And then we got the thing with Eddie Barzoon where he's like slowly being kicked out of the company. And like, I have felt like that, you know, like when a group of friends like slowly kicks you out. So it's like, oh, fuck, what did I do wrong? And yeah. then all of a sudden he just gets killed. So it's like two and a half horror movies in this one movie. And like, so after yeah, the first time I was able to see that. But yeah, it's an amazing point. Like I, I knew watching the movie, I felt like, man, Marianne is getting the worst of it here. She's mm-hmm. getting fucked over. Uh, and then, you know, towards the end of the movie, I was like, this, you know what this feels like? This feels like we're watching um, Rosemary's Baby from Guy yep. Woodhouse's point of view. You know, I think that's exactly what they went for. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Um, you know, she, Marianne is, is Rosemary. And yes. And Honestly, she even got the same kind of haircut. She, too. And she went for the bob, which mm-hmm. you know I don't think was flattering on her. I don't, I don't know. Maybe maybe right. it was, but that's because I love curly hair. So I, I, I oh, love okay. that. Girl. But that that's also so amazing. Like, um, John John Milton saw that she had curly hair. She had the perm, right? Yes. He, he I knew he was working on her as soon as he started talking to her. He's like, you should probably change your hair. You know, put it up. You know, stop being stop being curly. You know, go go back to your natural color. Mm-hmm. But then, what is his sister? What is um, his uh, daughter? His daughter get, get, has has that curly has hair that now. Curly I hair. was like, I I saw that and I was like, master manipulation tactic, like delicious. Because now, the person who your son sees more than his own wife looks like his wife. So like by proxy out of his love for his wife is going to fall in love with like his half sister. So, like, so is he really even cheating on her? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, just, tell, just tell, kidding. Just tell, kidding. Tell, tell, let my man tell me he fucks someone else just because he looked like me. I'm still me. I'm still <laughs> here. Like, 
<laughs> All right, what if it was a clone of you? Honestly, my clone is probably up to some tricks. So I'm blaming the clone before I blame my man. Okay, right, how about <laughs> if it's a future or a past version of you? Past version of me doesn't care about current me's feelings. <laughs> okay. F- future, future me knows what it's going to do to me and doesn't care. So... So okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. So any version of it, just, if you being you, alternate version, whatever, is fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Somebody who looks like me, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. The multiverse Anthony Jerome M's out there, perfectly fine. They're welcome. Yeah. What's What's mine is theirs. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just thought that was like like you're saying master manipulation of it, and uh, but going back to your to the point you made about it being a horror movie in Marianne's point of view. It's like, wow, that's, that's really great because that's exactly what happens to her. She is isolated. She's made to, she's made to feel like they gaslight her a lot. Mm -hmm, Like specifically mm -hmm. when um, she is choosing the paint color Mm -hmm. for the house. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she's like, how about this green? And then the, 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 the other lawyer's wife who's become her friend now She's like, ah, oh, you know, I don't like that green. Oh, how about this green? I don't like that green. Did you notice that every shade of green that that Marianne put up on the wall, that's what that lawyer's wife was wearing. That's what her, the color of very, cl- her very close, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So like, she was being gaslit into like kind of believing that the choices she was making weren't weren't good enough or weren't right. You know? Yeah. See, and the thing is, like, when you're from a small town or when you're from like a a place like bumfucks it, Florida. You know, these people's opinions, they weigh more than even they know. And, like, also, they do kind of know, too. It's like, well, I live in the big city. I've been here for years. Clearly, my opinion is far more, like, I have far more references to draw from than you do. And so, like, they know what they're doing. And so, also, this uh, this wife, I forget her name, but she's, like, my fa- one of my favorite characters of the show. Movie. Because she dresses so well. I love all of her outfits. Jackie, um, Jackie Heath. Okay. Yeah. I, I and, don't remember where I've seen her, but I know I've seen her throughout my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I like that because of her and uh, her husband, who was uh, Lehman Heath, played by Ruben Santiago Hudson, and Jackie Heath mm-hmm. was played by Tamara Tooney because they were in the forefront of the movie, like it, it felt cool because there were people of color. There were black people in the mm-hmm. movie, which is great. Um, one thing that I noticed though, that I, I was, I picked up on, and I'm not sure if you picked up on it and maybe I'm reading it incorrectly or just a different way is that it seemed that any inclusion of people of color or different cultures was always met with like, that's evil or that's bad. Cause like whenever, like so, we have um, that Kevin's first case, right? Yeah, With, Kevin's. First, uh, I'm checking to see. I know the guy's character's name. He was in Oz, so his name was. Was he BC. in Oz? Yeah. No, was, that's he, not. That is not out of BC. That's not out of BC. No, wow. that, that is cut that, cut that. <laughs> I guess we all look the same to you, Miguel. Oh, okay. Guy, no, no, guy, no, no, no. <laughs> he does look like an older out of BC, though. <laughs> Oh, that's uh, Delroy Del- Lindo. Delroy Lindo. Jesus Christ. How did I not realize that was Delroy Lindo? I love Delroy Lindo. Wow. I am so sorry for saying that that was out of BC. I, I, now I got to... No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to take uh, take the L on that one. Um, but yeah, I cannot believe it was Delroy Lindo. And I I said it was a character who played... Uh, <laughs> out of BC. Out of BC in, the, uh, in Oz. That, that's the L. That's the L I'm going to take. <laughs> But Delroy Lindo is an amazing fucking actor. I love Delroy Lindo so much. Delroy Lindo plays um, the the character of uh, Philippe Moyes. Right? I don't even remember why we were talking about Philippe Moyes. Oh, oh, that's what I was saying. Um, whenever we saw like uh, people of color or different cultures, that was what the devil was fucking with. Like he, they went to that. Uh, that restaurant where he was dancing with the uh, the belly dancers, or he sp- he speaks multiple languages. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it felt to me like perhaps 
maybe, maybe not. It just felt weird that mm. um, the devil loved to steep himself in other cultures, you know. And, and, and that was seen as bad, you know. He went to the flamenco club and, oh, he's talking with the girls and he's smoking cigarettes indoors. And he's on the train speaking Spanish about, you know, oh, killers are on the train. I, yeah. I, he's asking the Chinese guy where to find the fucking cockfight or the yeah, chicken yeah, who can yeah. play checkers, whatever. That that second woman that he had on the elevator with him when he was trying to tempt uh, Giselle, Ke- Kevin, yeah, Giselle, she was Asian, right? Mm-hmm. So like, I don't know, I just felt like it. But then I was reading up on it, and it, it's people were saying that like it was showing that evil or Satan himself is in all cultures, not only in like this culture. And I was like, uh, sh- sure, I don't like it. I, I just didn't like it, you know. You know, I can, I can kind of get with that. However, my thing is, how come all the evil, the white evil that he associates with, how come they're in the boardroom? You know, they're his assistants. Yeah. They're they're at the ringside fight when he goes to Madison Square Garden. But like the of color evil, shitty bar. Uh, uh, someone who just came from Paris, who's a, probably a model slash sex worker. Uh, yeah. But it's these, you, you know, these white people. It's Eddie Barzoon. What, what the fuck's an Eddie Barzoon? Like, <laughs> yeah, or like how um, Moyes, Philippe mm-hmm. Moyes, was like in the pits of uh, you know the, the slum. You know. Well, I do have one thing to say about that that really, really, really interested me, is that I do think everyone who had their eyes on Philippe Moyes looked at him as like either some crazy, weird voodoo practitioner. But John Milton says, well, yeah, he has $15, $15 million in his bank account. What do you think he was paying us with, goat's blood? It's like, who do you think I'm fucking with? I'm only fucking with the... It's weird. It's a, yeah. like I said, it's weird because like he's telling you he fucks with the best, but we see him do these things. It's like, do you? Yeah. But I mean, it's the devil, so why wouldn't you, you know? You go to a place that looks really shitty, but you come to find out they have the best food you ever had in your life. It's like, mm, okay, you know, like, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. There's definitely something there that I probably, I'm going to watch this movie a bunch more. Like, I can't believe I went this long without <laughs> watching it again. Um, and it's because I really enjoyed it. So I'm sure in further watches, I'll, I'll probably get a better, better read on it. But, but it's just something that I was like, hmm, okay, that's interesting. Very weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But first of all, right off the bat, the movie started crazy. The movie started mm-hmm. with Randy Meek's sister. Right. right? Heather Matarazzo. Heather Matarazzo. Uh, like, she's on the stand. And so this movie came out in, what, like, 97? Yes. 97. And Scream mm-hmm. was 96? Yeah. Scream was 96. Oh, okay. So like this was a year after, but she wasn't in the first, she wasn't in the original right. screen, right? She was in Screen Three, three. Screen Three, right, right. But still, like, um, so she looked like a child. I mean, she was obviously a child, and she's like <laughs> describing just a, a terrible thing that's happening to her, where she got assaulted by her teacher in school, and that that scene was like, oh, wow, like we just came into like craziness to start the movie right with the teacher like he started mimicking the hand sick what he like his hand movements under the table i was like wow that's yeah he was playing with himself also oh oh yeah that's right that's that's right he was i forgot (laughs) about that and i don't think i ever caught that when i saw the movie the first time i don't think i ever realized Mm -hmm. that yeah i don't yeah i can see that because like you i don't know it's it's only for a second, really, like that they show it. The yeah. most is like react. The, after that, it's like all reactions. Um, but this is su- for me. This is such a scene of like what, what like so many young girls and and women have to deal with. Where it's like when Keanu Reeves starts asking the question, "Have you ever heard a game of a game called Special Places? And is it sexual in nature? And have you ever played it?" It's like, listen, if I kiss. Or let my classmate touch me. That's one thing. If this fucking grown man puts his hand up my skirt, I, you should be mad. You should still be mad at him. Why are you asking me if I ever did this, that, or whatever? 
if I kiss a boy, that means any man that comes through can do whatever they want. That makes no fucking sense. And because yeah. that's like the general consensus back then in like a lot in a lot of areas to this day, everyone's like, yeah, you, you played that game. Of course, you were asking for it. It's like, get the yeah. fuck out of here. Or she was experienced and she or she knew she, what she was doing. Mm-hmm. It's just it's terrible. But uh, oh no, it's terrible. Blank. <laughs> finish yeah. that sentence. <laughs> what, what I was gonna say is that um, before that, so before that happens, Keanu is is at like a, a a crossroads in his life. Like he's been winning these. He's I think he's won up sixty four cases. He hasn't. He's never lost. Mm-hmm. And uh, he comes to this case and he sees his client basically reenacting what he did to this little girl under the table mm-hmm. and, and touching himself. And he's like, he need, he needs a recess, and he goes into the room, uh, goes into the bathroom, and he takes off his ring, which is weird. I don't know why you would do that. Why right. would you take off your ring? I guess it's more, it's like cleaner, but maybe do that at home so you don't lose, lose your ring or whatever. But he takes <laughs> off his ring to wash his hands, and then I don't know if you noticed there was a big boom. There's a loud boom, and no. that's where you can insert that. That's where like the two lives separate. Because at the end of the movie, when he, you know, spoiler alert, if you still haven't left, you should leave now. When he kills himself, that's where his life starts over again was where that boom happened. I've never heard a boom. Yeah. (gasps) Yeah, it was kind of cool because I noticed it at the beginning. (laughs) And so he hears that boom and uh, everything from then on is... I guess, would you say it's a dream? No, he lived it, right? He lived it, right? And what, I just thought the a... devil reset everything, and that's the point, because that's where the devil was, in the bathroom with him. Yeah, and then that that does make sense. Why would the devil reset? Oh, no, the devil resets it because he wants another try, and we see that at the end. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah. I love that. But why wouldn't Keanu realize that? It's like, Well, like he said, like the, like the devil says, like John Milton says, vanity, right? Well, that, but also... This man gaslights the woman he supposedly loves more than anyone else. Yeah. He's going to gaslight himself a little bit. So, of course, like he sees Marianne and he he clearly is so happy to see her because it's like, I thought you were dead. So, like, those memories are still in his head. But he just, like, he probably just sees it as if I let my morality loose here or if I lose my sense of integrity here, this is the kind of issues or troubles i can find myself in if i just continue to allow my incentive my sense of uh, integrity to degrade i'm going to eventually be this person who doesn't go fuck about my wife my life i just want to make this guy happy and like i'm not doing that so like he probably just sees it as, probably just saw it as like a oh man my life could if, if if i let this guy who's jacking off at the table in court win then there's a slippery slope and who knows what else I'll let anyone get away with. So I kind of like, I think he's gaslighting himself. Mm, okay. He knows his wife okay. is dead. He's happy to see her. He's glad to see her. Like he knows she died. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, so, but at the beginning of the movie, he makes his mind up to actually continue to uh, defend this, this pervert, this sexual, criminal i mean this monster really and uh, he gets he gets i was gonna say gets him off but that in the context <laughs> of the story oh, shit. i mean he, he got him off him he got he, himself off yeah <laughs> he successfully defends this child molester this child predator and um like just the the, the um what she had to go through on, on the stand that was that was terrible to see but what a way to start a, a movie. It's just crazy. And I was, I was also going to say, like, Exhibit A being introduced while interviewing the witness is wild. That is so, that's such a, like, courtroom movie thing. Like, oh, yeah. really? Exhibit A, the defense hasn't seen, really? Did you start with, like, Exhibit F? No, you're going to start Exhibit A. Is <laughs> It's not Exhibit A. It would be, like, Exhibit J or something like that. Plus, the lawyer, the, the judges, I'll let it go. Like, I don't think so. Right, like, I don't think that mm-hmm. would have this is the mistrial. No. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. You're presenting it's, new evidence now? Nah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had a question for you. So do you think that future lawyers watch this movie and think uh, after, having, 
after having watched this movie, think of like their devil's advocate moment, like their moment in their career where they're like, okay, I can continue doing this and I'll make a lot of money, but I'm going to be a piece of shit or I cannot do this and maybe, you know, be an environmental lawyer or, you know, just be a good lawyer. You know, is there such a thing? I mean, maybe they have to see this kind of movie when they're younger. But I would kind of hope that somebody who's pursuing a law degree doesn't need to determine the morality based on a movie from the 90s. Like that. Like, <laughs> I would I would hope that this movie doesn't have to play a factor in that and that they already kind of like, yeah, you know what? I'd rather not lie for someone who touches kids, you know? Yeah. I would. <laughs> I don't know if that's a tall order or what, but... <laughs> I would, I would. <laughs> Al Pacino said, do this. I'm not going to do this. So, like, I would just really hope. <laughs> do you think that, because uh, Pacino makes a great, or John Milton, I should say, he made a great case for this um, in that monologue. He, he starts it off by saying, you know, like, I set the table. Like, mm. you choose to come to dinner and eat. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, do you, do you believe that? Do you believe that it was um, Kevin Lomax's fault for what happened? Nah, 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 nah. He was um, he was manipulating him the whole time. Where like he lets Kevin know from the very first time that they meet, he's not sure if he wants Kevin on his team. He knows he's good, but he's not sure if he wants him on the team. Like, oh, are you offering me a job? I'm thinking about it. Oh, so but he, I think he was always going to offer him the job. Like he was see, his, his dad. Like he went, I think he's been scheming on this the whole time. No, he was, but he needs to make sure that Kevin does like Kevin needs to show out. Kevin needs to show that like he can do the job. Like, yeah, I'm going to offer it to you and you're probably going to rise to the occasion, but I need you to rise to the occasion on your own. I need you to think that you did this. I need you to think that this is all because of you. Like you became a partner in who knows how long. And do you know why? Because that's the the quality of work that you did. Other people don't make partner that quick, but because of his ambition and his desire to make this person proud, it's like, well, I'm going to work as hard as I can. And that fuck it. If that means leaving my, my wife alone to her delusions, uh, I because I don't want to get mad at her if she gets better if I quit this case. You know he he's being pushed and like persuaded. Like he's like, hey Kevin, like you know if you if you want to go like stay with your wife, that's cool. Nobody's gonna be mad at you. But meanwhile, he like talks shit about other people to Kevin who work for him, and it's like, oh, so like if I don't act in the way that you want to. I'm going to be one of those people you talk shit about when I'm not around. So like the pressures, like I've, I've seen this pressure before. Like it's, it's all manipulation. Like at any point in time, he could say like, he let Kevin decide if he was going to stay on the case while his wife's mental health was deteriorating. He's like, no one's going to be mad at you. And like, he could have just said, I'm taking you off the case. No one will be mad at you. Listen to your boss, take care of your wife. But he's like, Oh, you still want to? Well, okay. Like, no, like, <laughs> okay, but see that—that's my thing with with religious people is that when you believe in a Satan, you can blame Satan for everything and all accountability is out the door. Mm. But in my eyes, Kevin needs to take accountability, and he does. He actually does. Yeah, he does for the most part at the end, where he's like, "Yeah, you're right. I did this." Like he. Made those choices. It, he made those choices, yeah. And he, he, what did he say to, that was so fucked up. It was petty beyond necessity when um, when John is uh, uh, saying what Kevin said to him. He's like, what did you say to me uh, when I told you you can get off the case? You said, what worries me the most is that if I do leave the case, she gets better and I grow to resent her. Mm-hmm. And he did it in, in Kevin's His voice. voice. I was like, oh, that was petty, bro. <laughs> that was petty. But that's true. Like, you you can say, yes, he was manipulative. Yes, I completely agree. And the devil is not without fault. Or, or, or I just think I think there's accountability that needs to happen with Kevin. And I think okay. I think he t- I think he took it there uh, at the end. He I think he agreed to that. Um, and I just I love the idea of a devil 
or a character who can like talk you into doing some shit that like is contrary to your best interest or or maybe it's in your best interest but like it's gonna affect the people around you sort of thing right and you're, right you're like fuck that i don't care i don't care i'm gonna do that <laughs> because i because this is what i want um I, I don't know i think i know we're all over the place but I, i'm just vibing right now I'm like me and anthony New format like, baby yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but al pacino as the devil did such a fucking amazing job. I loved it. What did you think of his his performance? Yeah, I think he plays a very good devil. I um I think for me one of the key pieces of playing the devil is like you tell people you're the devil without telling them. And like right. he literally looks at Kevin, he's like, "You wouldn't think I'm a master of the universe, would you?" And like that's exactly yes. the kind of shit that I'm, Yeah, yes. like yeah. <laughs> you know. And so it's uh, I really I really love he he does play the sly and subtle aspect of the devil really well. I think uh, not to go on a, on a tangent, but like the other people who also do it well are Robert De Niro in Angel Heart and Jack Nicholson uh-huh. in Witches of Eastwick. I haven't seen like, Witches of Eastwick yet. I need to watch that. No, <gasps> Con- confess why you haven't seen it confess, now. <laughs> but um. You just recently watched Angel Heart, is that correct? Oh my god, I love it! I love that movie. Ran so this movie could s- <laughs> something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I wonder uh, who, who uh, recommended that movie to you. You did, and I love oh. it. And <laughs> I rented it, and I'm gonna buy it. And um, I'm gonna say Robert De Niro is the better devil, but Al Pacino is still okay. a good one. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I could see that. I could see De Niro being the better devil. Um, but, but, uh, I just, does De Niro, and it's been maybe a year or two since I've seen Angel Heart, does De Niro have a monologue in Angel Heart the way that Pacino has a monologue in this movie? So he, okay, so, okay, so what's it's so interesting is Pacino has a monologue, Jack Nicholson has a monologue in The Witches of Eastwick, but I don't think... Robert De Niro has a monologue, but he has a lot of lines that like are just so great and bone chilling to where like it took place of that monologue just because like whatever this guy's going to say, it's bone chilling devil, you know, like there's one that one part where he's he's cracking the hard boiled egg ever so gently. He's rolling it on the plate, put some salt on it and he eats it fucking pissed the fuck off. And he's like. It, it uh, he his work he doesn't need a monologue I, so no unfortunately okay. he doesn't have one but his lines are like nah no I get it you're you're definitely Lucifer I get it <laughs> yeah yeah um so that so that scene in this movie in um, the Devil's, Devil's Advocate, Advocate. <laughs> <laughs> the scene uh, at the end of what John Milton uh, played by Al Pacino's uh, monologue at the end makes the wait movie can I say me. Yeah, yeah, can I say right. one thing real quick before you get mm-hmm. into that? So, like, this entire movie, Kevin just thinks his life is just going to shit, right? You know, well, he's 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 achieving his goals. Fantastic. Amazing. But, like, he's finding out that the people he has to deal with, his clients, are pieces of absolute shit. So, like, once again, he's losing his sense of integrity piece by piece. And then it's at the end where just so many things get thrown at him. Like, um, the client from the very beginning of the movie was found with a dead girl in his trunk, right? Yeah. And then he finds out his dad is the devil. And then he finds out his dad, the devil, wants him to fuck his half-sister. Like, (laughs) who, like, is absolutely demon-coded. Red hair, always wears red, speaks multiple languages. Like, if honestly, like, that's Elizabeth Hurley as the devil in Be Dazzled. Like, that's clearly... She plays a great devil. I love Elizabeth Hurley in Mm -hmm. Be Dazzled. I do, too. Amazing movie. I gotta watch that movie again. I haven't seen it in a very long time. Uh, I, I always think about the time when she takes him to the nightclub and the music is so great. And like, there's one girl who's like, dance with me, Elliot, dance with me. And it's just like that. Honestly, that is partially what got me into raving because I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, the devil's here. The music's great. People want to dance. Yep. So, but um, do you want to do uh, 
be deviled in some way. Maybe we could do it for your for your show or I would like to do a do double feature. Page, feature yeah. the, okay. The old one and the Elizabeth Hurley one. Okay, I've seen both of those. They're both really good. I haven't seen the old one. Okay. okay. Uh, we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll I would talk. love to we'll do talk. that. I, would I don't want to, to jump in on whatever plans you have, but I, have I love none. the devil so much, <laughs> and I, I would love to talk about it. Okay. I'm That'd keeping that fun. in. We're keeping this in, in the show. Oh, know. yeah. You can hold me accountable, because you, I'm going to forget. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just because I don't want to edit. Okay. Um, that, too. That, that's yeah. the fun part about these kind of episodes, where it's like, you just got to take out the... <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's all. That's all. Um, yeah. So, the, so the final scene when um, when John Milton says a gun in here, and he just starts laughing, and then like Keanu or uh, I'm sorry, Kevin shoots him, and he's like, oh, 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 it's like faking being hurt. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it because Kevin thought that he could get revenge for uh, for his wife mm-hmm. by shooting this man, but. Obviously, it, he he comes to realize, fuck, I, there's nothing I can do, and we didn't even talk about her being sexually assaulted by by Satan. Uh, right? Yeah. Like she, so she he wins the case. He runs back home, and she's like left the house, and she's you know got a, a, a cover. Yeah, I, I just went Goliha. What a Goliha! She had a Goliha. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I feel like Goliaths have Goliaths have tigers. Comforters are those big fluffy things, you know. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. San Marcos is the one with the with the tigers and shit. San Marcos blanket. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, but it'd be so funny if she had a San Marcos blanket in oh, the church. Oh my god! This movie would have been like my favorite movie. If she had a, a San Marcos blanket, which is funny. There is a connection, a small connection, in that the director of this uh, of Devil's Advocate is Taylor Hackford. And he directed Blood In, Blood Out. I don't know if you've seen Blood In, Blood Out. Yes, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. Fortunately. Listen, no. Uh-uh. Anthony. Anthony, are we about to fight right now? What is yeah. happening? You didn't like Okay. <laughs> Let me. No, I didn't so dislike Anthony's it. Like, it, yes. it, was, it was just a bit much for me. <laughs> Okay, so, you, I was talking to JP for Pop Warner <laughs> about that scene. Yo, we go back and forth about like memes from Blood and Blood Out. It's so fucking funny. Yeah, okay. Yes, I haven't seen that movie in maybe a decade, but in my teenage years, I watched that movie so much. Like, I was, it, it's just like Blood and Blood Out, American Me, Mi Vida Loca, um, uh, Zoot Suit. Zutu riots, um, and then all the you know like menace to society, uh, boys in the hood, uh, juice, juice all, like all that shit was mm-hmm. on repeat for me a- as a teenager. So like blood and blood out has high uh, holds high esteem for me. I just within the last three days ordered a t shirt off of Etsy with El Gallo Negro on on, on, the sh- on a shirt. <laughs> And there was another one that I'm getting for JP, but he he won't hear this. Uh, <laughs> that says, "Give me some chun chun with the dude in the, in the red in the red yeah. underwear." Oh my god! So okay, so what? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I may or may not cut this. You know what? Fuck that was advocate. We're talking. Uh, no, about it, right? <laughs> no, we're not. No, we're not. No, we are not. He tried. He tried. Okay. Uh, we okay. are. We are not. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to say that the director of this movie also directed, um, uh, directed Blood and Blood Out, and he that directed is very a, interesting. Uh, he directed a bunch of other movies. He directed Ray from two thousand four. Wow. Okay. Uh, and he did an Officer and a Gentleman, uh, Bound, uh, or Dolores Claiborne. Like he is a seasoned uh, director, and, and uh, I personally appreciate the movies that he that he makes. Right. <laughs> so okay. so um, I don't even know where we were anymore. What was your favorite part of this movie? Um, honestly, it was probably like the last maybe 30 minutes or so, last 25 minutes where like we discover he, where Al Pacino is the devil. And also there's a couple parts of the monologue that I really wanted to mention. Oh, yeah. Um, Go I, for it. I hope it makes sense because... It's only part, it, there's there's way more to it, yeah. but the part that I have is, 
You sharpen the human appetite to the point where it can split atoms with its desire. You build egos the size of cathedrals, fiber optically connect the world to every eager impulse, grease even the dullest of dreams with these dollar green gold plated fantasies until every human becomes an aspiring emperor and becomes their own god. And then he says something later that I didn't write about. And then they whip out their cybernetic keyboards, their pristine cybernetic keyboards, and total their billable fucking hours. And I was like, okay, so you're talking about me being on social media and working from home and loving it and like trying to get some fucking monies off this internet from my dullest of desires, which like not dull, but like, you know. If I can make money off eating shrimp, I'm good. I'm trying to make money off eating shrimp. And it's like, I'm in this post and I'm going to report it because I don't like it. <laughs> so Anthony is about to uh, tell us that he now has an Only Shrimp fan page. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Only, <laughs> only, only Shrimps fan page. Um, and that's where he's going to be making his money from now on. You'd be surprised how many shrimps can fit where. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's amazing. Uh, the the yeah, this the monologue was so great. One of the one of the lines that I love the most from that is, "God likes to watch." Like he's right. a voyeur, right? Like I love mm-hmm. that stuff because that's one of a lot of uh, a lot of what people have wrong with with a creator is that they can sit back and watch as millions upon millions and billions of people suffer, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what he's saying is like, he likes to watch. Whereas he was saying the devil, he's like, I've been here. I live here. Like I've been in the pit (laughs) with you and I never judged you. I let you do what you wanted to do. And I, and I, uh, and uh, you know, I, I I lived the life that you were living. I've been in the subway. Whereas the, the other dude, he lives upstairs. He's an absentee landlord, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, it's just, it's mm-hmm. just so good. Uh, I just, I just loved it. Um, and there's a lot of connections from the beginning to that, to that end. Where like, um, in the beginning, he says, uh, "Oh, uh, um, Kevin says to John, oh, are we negotiating?'" And John says, "Always." Mm-hmm. And in the end, in the, in the monologue. Uh, they, they say the same thing. Are we negotiating? And uh, Kevin says, always. You know? Always. Mm-hmm. Always. So, um, but oh yeah, but we were talking about um, Marianne getting sexually assaulted by the devil. That was a fucked up scene, right? Because she, she she goes to the, she goes church. to the church and she has the cobia on mm-hmm. and, and she, she takes it off and she, she, we see she's all scratched up because Kevin wasn't believing her, right? Because what does he, what does she say? He was assaulting me the whole day. And mm-hmm. Kevin's like, the whole day he was in, he was in court with me the whole day. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. And so he still doesn't believe her, which I, it's, it's hard to fault him that particular thing. But like you can still believe that something happened to her, and that she. Yeah. Needs her. You you can be uh, empathetic to what's happening to her without like obviously like, not not believing exactly what she said because perhaps what you're seeing is contrary to that. But that is your wife. Like she is going through something. Mm-hmm. Something obviously physical happened to her in the past. It's all been like oh I'm seeing things. She's seeing like people's faces twist into like devil faces which we're not going to talk about the cgi because the cgi did not, did not, <laughs> hey but on uh, but honestly them. if demons existed and they look like that i wouldn't be like nah <laughs> nah, nah. If, if some freakish thing with fucked up sharp teeth and face can't, I'm like Damn, I should go see a doctor, huh? Yeah. Like I'm not well. I'm not well. Like, <laughs> yeah, she needed to advocate for herself a bit better there. Like, she, I, I think she needed to to go to the doctor. Or I mean, who's Marianne's something. advocate? If the devil got one, why can't she have one? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> who's God's advocate? Yeah, you never hear about God's advocate. Uh, God, uh, God doesn't show up to assign one. <laughs> so, but, but yeah, so that's fucked up. Like, and then so she's she's then put into the psychiatric ward or whatever and 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 then she ends up killing herself which it okay so 
she breaks a, a mirror and the shards fall to the floor and then she locks the door in and she's in there by herself. And John breaks the door down by breaking the glass, which gives her more access to more glass. So, like, I understand, like, he had to do something, but I just thought that that was a bit weird. But that scene, like, I know people make fun of Keanu with his acting and he wasn't the best in here. He wasn't the worst, but he wasn't the best. But that particular scene where she takes the shard, the, the mirror shard and, like, slices her neck. her neck open and like just all the blood's coming out and like i felt it like i i felt his grief and his anguish in that moment you know i thought i thought he did a pretty good job there so uh you know th- while the acting wasn't the best by keanu here i think he did an ad- admirable job admirable job what, what did you think yeah no i there was never a second where i didn't believe he loved her he was definitely a husband in a horror movie who gaslights his wife, who, like, isn't present. He's, he was, he was very that, honest. But there was nothing about this that didn't, like, he dismissed her, but that's just simply because he thought he was right and she was wrong, not because he lo- he didn't love her, you know? Or, like, someone you hate can say the sky is blue. It's like, of course, you think the sky is blue, you fucking moron. You can't even really see most colors. You know, it just... <laughs> Yeah. It, 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 he wasn't dismissing her because he thought she was lesser than. It's like, I don't think so. Um, I don't think his acting was that bad. I well, it, it wasn't worse than anything else from him I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so then he has the monologue. Um, his sister comes down and like... Pacino, like, uh, basically is the um, Nostradamus of porn because he's trying to get his steps, stepchildren to fuck. <laughs> and so th- the, he wants them to fuck so that they can produce a child who will be the Antichrist. Mm-hmm. And and when Keanu's like, or when, sorry, when Max is, no, sorry, when Kevin is like, oh, do you want the Antichrist? He looks back at his daughter and he's like, like so dismissive he's like sure if that's what you want to call it sure <laughs> the antichrist and I, and I love it oh and also the scene in the, in the because, funeral because because we know, because we know the answer is yes right is yeah, that why yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. he's like fuck yes like <laughs> well he's also like oh sh- sure like the antichrist is is a, a term that like you guys the religious have used to describe my child i don't think of him as the antichrist sort of thing like uh. he also even says like Keanu, oh shit, uh, Kevin's like, you guys lose, and then uh, John, Satan's like, yeah, think of the source, it's like, yeah, the, the the people who wrote the Bible said that I lost, but I don't think I've lost, I'm still in the game, you know, he's like, he said, what does he say, the 21st century or the 20th century was all me, right? Yeah, that's one thing I actually quite didn't understand where his sort of tenacity was coming from, he's like, oh, the new millennium's coming, yeah, title we'll fight, me. The what? The Millennium. Will Smith's CD. No. Millennium. No. No. Miami. I hope you feel Miami. bad for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> no. Listen, that's two '90s reference, bro. Come on, man. No. Right, so no, I I just didn't get why. He, what does the year 2000 mean in your fight with God? I I don't get it. Yeah. Well, he says round 20, right? Because each right. year in a thousand. I don't know. It's funny. It's cool. Uh, these little things here and there. But mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. the Antichrist. So that's what I thought is like um, he he was like, you you guys call me Antichrist. I call him my heir, my seed or whatever. But but so he wants um, the stepbrother and sister to have sex so that they can produce an heir and it's to be the Antichrist. Uh, and He's like, oh, but I have to do it willfully. I have to be willing to do it, right? He's like, yeah. And mm-hmm. he's like, okay. And then he grabs the gun and, and shoots himself and kills himself. And the, when when Pacino sees that, when John Milton sees that, mm-hmm. it's hard to separate Al Pacino from the character because he's so. Oh. <laughs> but when John sees that or Satan sees that, he goes, no. And mm-hmm. you see him like turn like physically into the what we more um, put on as as the devil is what we think of as a devil it's you know the the cgi wasn't that bad but it wasn't it wasn't terrible either i thought it, it held right. pretty well 
and him just screaming no and then everything like the stepsister dies because basically he's like well i don't need you anymore Mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. so he kills her and then the that um piece of artwork behind his Mm. his uh desk that's always moving these writhing bodies that were that were white mm -hmm. and then when he says no they turn red and they like all that stuff so I'm, i don't know man um that was just a great a great scene what, what did you think about that so i really liked how at the end of that sort of like outburst he turned into like uh keanu reeves with long hair because yeah. I'm like, oh, so that's your true, f like, okay, that's the devil. Okay, I I fuck with that. You know, John Milton, the, the I would also like to, okay, so let's go way back. There's a scene when Keanu Reeves, uh, Kevin and John are on the rooftop. And for some reason, Kevin looks at Mil John Milton's shoes and he's wearing like heels, kind of. They kind of look like hooves. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering about that. So I just wonder, like, is it supposed to look like hooves? Is it supposed to look like this man is trying to make himself look taller because he's a small man? Um, which, who knows? But also, I do just really appreciate the fact that, like, when he goes to what I, I'm i going to believe is his true form, it looks like Keanu Reeves. And it's like, okay, that's why Kevin's your son. That's why he looks like that because, like John Milton, I I'm not understanding this form or why you chose it. So, like, yeah. I I love I love the visuals of it. I love what it made me think. Yeah, and, and what what you were saying about um, him turning into Keanu Reeves or Kevin with wings, like I was thinking that that's Lucifer because Lucifer was the fallen angel, mm -hmm. right? And he lost against the battle with with God and was cast out of heaven and that's why he's in hell. Right. So that that was his true form, the original fallen angel, mm -hmm. which I thought was really great, you know. Um so I, I love how you can watch this movie and not know anything about Catholicism or Christianity or that sort of mm -hmm. stuff and just take it for face value so be good. But like the little Easter eggs they drop in there is is really entertaining. It it adds a lot. Right, that. right. Um, and so he shoots himself, uh, and then he, he's taken back to the very beginning of the movie where, as I stated earlier, that we hear that loud boom where he's in the, he's in the courthouse bathroom and he's just taken off his ring. He wakes up and he's looking at himself in the mirror and, um, that's where, where the movie starts up again. And he has the choice whether or not to be that person who defends a, a person he knows is a sexual a predator, a monster, or not. And he chooses to recuse himself. Did you hear that? I heard that. Yo. What's that behind you? I'm looking at this. <laughs> my, my shadow? I don't, you will not trick me. Don't insult my intelligence. <laughs> okay. you, do, you, do you need to check out, uh, make sure that uh, John Nelson isn't in your house? Are you good? Black Phillip, I already told you I'll sign the book. <laughs> Don't play this fucking bullshit. Like, <laughs> literally uh, butter and dresses. Like, I've, yes. I've already told you. <laughs> uh, I, that was my upstairs neighbor. They always drop shit. There's something wrong with them. Yes. <laughs> Black, Black Phillip has made an appearance. Um, so, so, anyways, before we interrupted by John Milton, um, he's... He is, <laughs> he's chosen to recuse himself from the trial and he's, he's going to get probably disbarred and he's going to you know, do that. That's fine. He, he, he sees his wife again. He sees Marianne and she's alive and he kisses her and he's happy. And then he cannot help himself. You know, um, what is it? Vanity. Vanity strikes again as the reporter is talking to him. He's like, this is going to be so huge. You're, you're a hero. We're going to write about you. And he's like, no, 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 that's okay. And then his wife, I don't know if they're doing it Eve sort of thing, like Adam and Eve, where like she gives him the, mm. the, the, um, the apple or whatever, but she's like, what do you have to think about it? And he's like, oh, call me on Monday. And then he's like, okay. And the reporter morphs into John Milton. And then we just start from there. And I just thought it was so great because he said in the beginning, that, or in his monologue, that vanity was his favorite sin, and mm -hmm. and um, Kevin Lomax has learned nothing, 
nothing from his vanity, and we start all over again. And so he thought that he got rid of him, but he, but he's, uh, you know, I would love to see a part two. I would love really? to, see, to, to see what happened. This could be like a, um, El, the Omen. There we go. Thank you. I could see okay. this where like, cause the Omen part two or part three is like 20 years later or where he is like a full grown adult. The child is a full grown adult and he's running to become president. And like, he knows that he's the devil's child and he's trying to like, oh. so that sort of thing. So like, I could see like a part two of this where it's like 20 or 30 years later and um, Kevin did did succumb to to like becoming the devil's you know ch- you know whatever right. having having that it would, that sort of thing you know I think it'd be Kev- really interesting. It would be like Kevin's in the Senate, his son was in the military, uh, his son rose through the ranks and like was probably yeah. a congressman or something. Now he's running for presidency. Like he's always been touching elbows with these people who like are in power. I guess the way when you mention it like that, I guess they already made that movie. That's the Omen two or three, <laughs> like whichever one. Oh, it was. okay. <laughs> I guess I just want to see um, Keanu Reeves again in this role. You know, you just um, want him to be the devil's son again. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> which I mean, is funny because because this is not the first time I've seen Keanu Reeves like deal with the devil. If you've seen Constantine, it's like. Does Keanu Reeves have some vendetta against the devil? Because hey, two movies is a lot. <laughs> yeah, he's gotten both sides of it. He's he's been on the side of the devil in this movie, and then against the devil in the other movie. So, which I haven't seen John. I've seen Constantine when it came out, and I haven't seen it since. But I did just buy it the other day. I sent you the picture, so um, <laughs> I'm looking forward to watching that. But so I mean, pretty much that's the movie. Uh, I mean, we were just kind of flipped around throughout the whole movie, but. <laughs> That's what happens when I'm vibing with AJM. Uh, but what we do here is, oh, first of all, let me back up. And I'm not I'm not going to cut this because I'm mm-hmm. cutting down on editing. What is your history with this movie? So it was always on like TNT, right? And so I always saw pieces of it. And I just always thought maybe it was like an episode of Law and Order or just something like that until I was maybe about... 15, 16. And I was like, oh, this is an actual movie. Because I had I'd seen The Matrix at that time and I really liked it. So I liked Keanu Reeves. Yeah. And so I watched it and I was like, oh my God, this guy's that. Like, I love a heaven and hell story. Yeah. I love, you know, Spawn, this, anything to do with like the devil, like even Bruce Almighty, because it's like God is involved. Yeah. And the bedazzled. So I just, I also, because at that time, I did end up liking Law and Order, so I'm like, if this is a Law and Order episode or a Law and Order movie, let's watch it. Um, but yeah, so it was just like always there, and I just thought it was a regular old Law and Order show until I watched the movie, and I, it was something way more. So like my spooky ass, like I enjoyed it. Um, it's one of those movies, though. I don't know anyone else who I could recommend it to because I don't know who could sit down for the two and a half hours and watch this sort of like episode of law and order with weird vibes so it's like always been something i kept to myself okay Mm -hmm. you you have a a a different relationship with recommendations (laughs) you don't give out recommendations very uh very frequently and if you do i know it's gonna be a great movie but also (laughs) you take recommendations very very What's the word I'm looking for? Very, um, I can't think of the word I'm trying to say, but like, if somebody gives you a recommendation, <laughs> you you give, you put a lot into it, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> Don't recommend yeah. shit willy nilly. I will get mad. <laughs> yeah. And so, but for me, I feel like I recommend more more than than you do, and I would recommend this to. Literally anybody. I don't know anybody mm. I wouldn't recommend this to, unless you hate horror movies, which we need to talk about the fact that this isn't even listed as a horror movie and probably why a lot of people don't cover it. This right. is a horror movie. If if Rosemary's Baby is a horror movie, which it is, this is mm-hmm, a horror movie. Mm-hmm, right? mm-hmm. But so anybody who loves horror movies, anybody, or if, it, I'm sorry, if you don't like horror movies or if you don't like courtroom dramas, I guess maybe not, but like, What's not to like about this? For for me, I would recommend it to literally anybody. But 
what, so what we do um, is, and we're going to keep this going because I love it, um, is mm-hmm. we we rate the movie based on five upside down crosses. So um, for you, how many upside down crosses would you give The Devil's Advocate out of five? I think I'm going to give it four. Four upside down crosses. I, uh, yeah. it's, a so- it's a solid movie. It's a good time. If you can understand, well, once I understood that there's two different horror movies in this one movie, it definitely made it easier to watch and more acceptable to watch. Uh, I think I, I'd have to say four. What about yourself? Behold, I send you out a sheep amidst the wolves. Yeah, I give it four stars as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I yeah I really was surprised at how much I enjoyed this movie. Um, I know it was it had a bit of soap opera acting a bit a bit over dramatic at, at some mm-hmm. points, and some of the acting in general like Keanu Reeves is kind of wooden, but that's his whole career. Like you can't mm-hmm. that's like saying oh Nick Cage is weird. It's like yeah that's that's mm-hmm. his shtick. That's what he does. So you can't really at this point in the career you can't really be like unless it's like irredeemable but in this case i don't think it was it was really good in fact so mm-hmm. um I, I gave it four stars it's just a lot of fun i think i don't know why more people don't talk about it. like when you brought it up i was like oh shit i haven't thought about the devil's advocate <laughs> in a very long time but it is so much fun um like the acting the, the this is right up my alley like i love this religious like this stigmata yeah Uh, the exorcist um you know anything dealing with like religion in a negative light or what i think we've Mm -hmm. talked about this in the past like i just love it it's just (laughs) it's fascinating to me so i would and i'm um i'm also gonna well you said you were gonna buy uh the other movie um, angel heart angel heart which i need to buy that as well but i'm gonna buy this as well because it's just so much fun uh, and I and I love that it was directed by Taylor Hackford, which is uh, he's uh, re- really talented. So I would give it four upside down crosses, definitely, and a and a big recommendation. And so we're we're doing a, another segment that we typically do at the end of the uh, at the end of the show, where uh, I used to recommend three movies to my guests so that they could fully repent from their horror movie sin of having not watched the movie that we just talked about. Moving forward, what we're going to be doing instead is I will be recommending one movie to them in this in a similar vein as the movie we just watched, and I'm going to be asking them for a recommendation in the same vein. So we already talked about about this a little bit, uh, AJM, but I recommended to you Angel Heart mm-hmm. um, as a, a, a movie similar, and that's just it's a and it's, it's an amazing movie. And Angel Heart came out in 1987 and uh, starring Robert De Niro. Ooh, 10 years before this one. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, to- I told you. Angel Heart ran so this movie could. Angel Heart uh, walked. <laughs> no, Heart... Angel Heart, Angel Heart oh, ran. Ran. I see what you're saying. They, they, yeah, they ran. So, so this one could fly? Or this one not even flying? We, Exist. We get it. Exist. It could <laughs> exist. Okay. All right, so that's my recommendation to you, Anthony. What would be your recommendation to me? Uh, okay, so my recommendation to you, because of like the devil portrayal, it would be Witches of Eastwick, because the devil is one of the main characters. Uh, he has a really cool name. And then we also, it takes us, well, I mean, I kind of spoiled it for you. Like I, I told you the guy's the devil, but it's really fun to find out how wow. he comes into town and what he does. So... Came out eighty seven, same year as Angel. Ooh, okay. What the fuck? Uh, yeah, Devil had a big year. Like, <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Thank you. I'm definitely gonna be watching that one. Has been on the list for a while, so I'm definitely gonna be watching that. Um, and so yeah, so Anthony, I just want to th- say thank you so much for hanging out with me in this absolute like. <laughs> like we were just we're vibing. vibing. We're vibing, baby. Yeah, we're vibing. Nothing but vibes. No format, just vibes. That's, Thank you that's for having for, me. Thank you so much. Yeah. This is always a, a lot of fun with you, just t- uh, talking these out. Again, if you can let people know where they can listen, where they could uh, follow you. And also, what the fuck? <laughs> AJM has a podcast that's amazing that if you're not listening to, you should be listening to. Uh, uh-huh. called, called Fuck You Hex. So, so please tell them where they can follow you and where they can listen. 
Well, thank you. So I'm most active on Twitter, uh, Anthony Jerome M A N T H O N Y J E R O M M. I am the host of Fuck You Hexed. Uh, you know, it comes out like weekly, bi weekly, quarterly. Um, episodes happen. Uh, you know, it's a very low commitment, so you don't have to worry about having to listen to an episode every week, you know, because sometimes they only come out monthly and um, sometimes they just come out when they come out. So it's like, you know, no commitment, but still fun conversation about shit I find spooky. I have guests. We talk about spooky stuff, things that scare us, like the ocean space hookups so you know <laughs> but yeah that's uh that's where you can find me that's what i do that's how i like to spend my time uh miguel what about yourself well first i just wanted to say he may not always be there when we call but he's always on time with an episode because <laughs> i anthony jerome M. is so talented and so charismatic on these episodes that you just like want more <laughs> And he's just fucking, he's just teasing us. He drops an episode whenever the fuck he wants. You actually, I don't know if I've told you this, but you were an inspiration to me for continuing on with this podcast because I didn't know if I was going to continue. Then I saw you and what you can, what you continue to say is, you know, you're making the podcast whenever you want when you get inspired. Right. And Mm -hmm. so you don't want, you don't want to burn yourself out. You want, this is a hobby for you. It's fun. Right. And that's what yeah. I lost sight of that is that it's supposed to be fun. It's not supposed, supposed to be a job, you know, if for some reason it ever gets to that point, which I, I, I doubt whatever, but if it ever gets to the point where it's my main source of income or whatever, that's different. But for right now, this is supposed mm-hmm. to be a fucking hot, it's supposed to be a hot. <laughs> so that's what I lost sight of. And, and, you know, talking to you and seeing your attitude towards it, it, it really made this possible. So I want to thank you for that. Um, that's awesome and, and everybody should be listening to your podcast and um we should be seeing a new episode very soon right <laughs> <laughs> i want to put yeah. it on blast right now no yeah i actually want to talk about evil dead rise soon because i really enjoyed that movie okay and not not a lot of people did so like i have something that i want to talk about so like yeah 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 okay. you know All like right. i said there, there will be an episode this quarter. So, <laughs> okay, that, that, that's all we ask for. Um, so, uh, you, you can find me uh, at. Sorry, if you'd like to contact the show, you can contact me at myhorrorconfessional@gmail.com. I'm on Instagram at myhorrorconfessional. Um, I'm on Twitter at mhcpod. Uh, I do have a Patreon that we're gonna. Uh, everybody who's still. A member of the Patreon, you guys are saints. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, for the month of June, I want to donate the proceeds to uh, a, a LGBTQ um, foundation or, or charity so that I'm going to be working. And, and, and Anthony, if you have any thoughts on that, I'd love to, to hear your thoughts on a charity perhaps that, that we can donate the, the money to. But I want to donate that um, to them. So I'll be posting once we donate. Uh, but everybody who's still rocking with me, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm sorry for the for the extended uh, absence. I'm hoping to be back with an uh, episode every week on this new format. Still working on the format, obviously. We're working out the kinks. Uh, but it's going to be more of a, a free-flowing conversation. Um, so thank you so much. I appreciate it. And we will talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.